so it's been, it's been a tough week, and, and then there's this, this fear that has, has gripped the nation. I called, I called my church in Washington on Friday, and I said, how are you guys doing? Like, what's going on there? They're like 45 minutes from where everything is going on, and, and they go, oh, well, just business as usual here. And I go, well, well, what do you mean? I mean, they've already closed schools in Wisconsin and Illinois and, and everything. And he's like, oh, yeah, they, they didn't even close school till after I got off the phone with him. I was like, wow, oh, that's, that's so weird. This is, this is such a, a time of fear. And so to see all of you here today, I think, I mean, this gathering is illegal in some places right now, having, having this many people together. And so it's great to see the, the warriors have, have shown up today. Now, I have been a, a member of this church. You don't know this because I'm online, but I have watched every one of Ben's messages since June of last year. So um, I like to critique him and sometimes pick on him. And, and like he said, we have this iron sharpens iron relationship that has, has made both of us better preachers and, and, and better people. And so I'm so, so thankful again, Ben, for, for having me. I was thinking about this message, and, and it's so, it, it's crazy because I, I wrote it like three weeks ago. God put this on my heart. And at the time, I was like, well, I don't know what, what why you're, this is the message, but I'll, I'll give it. And now, after all the stuff that's happened this week, it's like, oh, wow, I see what you're doing, God. Amen. It's it's about being warriors, and one of the, one of the favorite phrases that, that warriors use is the carpe diem, the, the seize the day, the seize the moment, to make the most of every opportunity. And I was thinking about this, that this morning, because in this time of, of fear that, that has gripped the nation, it is, it is not only... A, a, a time as everybody's scared, but it's an opportunity. Amen. And I talked to Ben the other day, and he kind of put this in my head. When he, I said, so what, what's your plan for your church? He said, well, CDs, DVDs. He said, I'll deliver them. We're going to do it online. He, he said, here's my battle plan. And he said, what we have going on is an opportunity. And he said, after this, church may never be the same, because I was thinking about it all week and how, boy, I don't know if churches are going to have Easter you know, many of the churches that I, I went, that I grew up in, were bigger churches, and they've all canceled. Amen. And they don't know if they'll be able to, to have Easter together uh, or, or what they're going to do. And I said, boy, it feels like the enemy is just wrapping everybody up. Like he's taking control and saying, no, no, I'm going to prevent you guys from being together. I am going to prevent you. And so I say, this is not an opportunity to be scared, but it's a time to seize the day. If you have your Bibles, we're going to be in Numbers 14 today. And there's a, there's a, lot, of, a lot of scripture, so I'll just kind of read through it and we can talk about it. It, it will be on the screen. But this is, this is a story that takes place right after the Israelites have, been, um, have, have come out of Egypt. After being slaves in Egypt for 400 years, now Moses has led them into the wilderness. And he has led them through, through, the, um, through the sea on the dry ground. He, he's brought them to the promised land. They are at the threshold of everything God has promised them. They send out 12 spies. Ten of them come back and say, the people there are too big. We can't do it. And, and there's two, Caleb and Joshua, who say, let's go. Let's seize the day. This is our land the Lord has been promising us for years and years, ever since Abraham. Let's go take it. The Lord is with us. Amen. So starting at, at verse 4, then they plotted among themselves. Let's choose a new leader. Let's go back to Egypt. But then Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground before the whole community of Israel. Two of the men who had explored the land, Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephna, 
tore their clothing. They said to all the people of Israel, the land we have traveled through and explored is a wonderful land. And if the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us safely into that land and give it to us. It is a rich land flowing with milk and honey. Do not rebel against the Lord. Don't be afraid of the people of the land. They are only helpless prey to us. They have no protection, but the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid of them. See, Israel here, they're scared. They are scared. There is a mass panic among these people who God just freed out of Egypt. And it's, it's crazy because we, we see this going on in our country right now. There's a mass panic. You can't even buy toilet paper anymore. I mean, when, when people, they get together and they, they start worrying and then fear grips them, they, they just start thinking irrationally. But warriors are the ones who are courageous. Warriors are the ones who are not afraid to stand up in the midst of the fear and say, no, God is bigger. They are like prey to us. This is our time. Now, a little bit about myself. I grew up in Wisconsin, and when I was 22, God had, had called me to move to Oregon. And he said, follow me. And so a crazy 22-year-old, I moved out to Oregon, didn't know anybody, never been on the West Coast, said, God called me here. After 11 years, after I graduated school, God called me back. I would not suggest moving 2,000 miles more than once. And now as I prepare for my third time, um, it's, I guess it's a, it's a habit now. I don't know. But when God calls you, you, you got to follow him. Because my greatest fear is not of what lies ahead but what I'm going to miss out on if I don't. Amen. See, warriors have that, that courage. Aaron and Moses and, and Caleb and Joshua, they know what God has promised. Amen. Mm -hmm. They know what is ahead, and, and they want it so badly. But the people say otherwise. The mass panic has, has just driven everybody crazy. So much so that they don't believe their leaders. They, here's the thing. If you, if you say, let's choose new leaders and go back to Egypt, you probably should because you, you've already lost. Yep. Mm -hmm. When you tell God, no, God, I'm not going to have you be the leader anymore. You're, you're lost. Amen. And see, that's one of those things about, about warriors is, is they obey their leaders. I know Ben had, had talked about last week that warriors always need, or they, they follow their general. And it's not just their, their, their human leaders. I, I know of another open Bible pastor in Illinois, and he's, his church is an interesting situation because it, he was the third pastor hired in three years. So they, they had a pastor for a year, and then they let him go. They had another pastor, they let him go. And then they had this pastor, and they wanted to let him go. And finally, I, I think Bruce said, okay, we're changing the board because something in here isn't working. Amen. And I grew up in a church that, that would get a new pastor every six years. Um, and so I've seen the, the rotation, and, I, and I've seen the way they do it. But coming in as a, as a, as a, a leader who has a heart, for broken churches and, and, and building churches, it's like I've seen too many churches not follow their leader. And I love when, when Bruce was here a few weeks ago, he told Ben, he said, wow, these people are amazing. Ben, your congregation is completely different from when you got here. These are your own people. They are following you. And that is so good to hear because that's what, what the characteristic of a warrior is. They follow their, their leaders and they follow the Lord. 
the Lord is, is, is not always going to tell you where you're going or why you're going to get there. But he makes these promises that I will be with you. Amen. And it's all about trusting the Lord's promises. Amen. Can I just tell you that, that God is good? Amen. Yeah. You know that old saying, God is good, and then they say, all the time, and all the time, God is good. See, that's important to know here and important in this story because when you trust the Lord, you trust the leader, you got to know that He's good. As we go into to verse 10, I want you to remember, God is good. But the whole community began to talk about stoning Joshua and Caleb. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to all the Israelites at the tabernacle. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people treat me with contempt? Will they never believe me, even after the miraculous signs I have done among them? I will disown them. I will destroy them with a plague. And then I will make you into a nation greater and mightier than they are. God is God is good, but here he wants to destroy not everybody, but I, I prepared this before I knew that there was a plague <laughs> currently going through the United States. When you're a warrior, it requires sacrifice. I, I remember the first time I moved across the country. I, I had built a, a good life for me. And I had to give it all up. I had to leave all my family, all my friends, everything I had known, all, everything that had, God had kept in me that was comfortable, I had to leave it. I had to sacrifice. It was a season of pruning where God just took away everything I knew so he could rebuild me into what he wanted me to be, into who he made me. Amen. And through that season, he made me a warrior. I mean, here God is, is, is casting judgment. And, and God's judgment, because God is good, his judgment is always just. He always has a reason. I, I know it's hard for, for us humans to look at this and go, that seems a bit much, a little bit too extreme. Can't we be like um, Abraham and, and Lot, where we just send them send the, the, those people off here and they can live over there and we'll just go over here? Like, God, is that... Can we do that instead? But God is always just. And Moses here is faced with two, two options. And in hindsight, we're looking at these two options. Okay, Moses, you can let these people go. God will take care of them. And, and God promises, I will make you into a great nation. I will fulfill my promises with you. Here we go. This is what we're doing. Or option number two, which is, well, Moses could stand up and say, you know, God, show mercy on these people. And then one day Moses will never see the promise. He will postpone what God is doing. And I've seen a lot, of, a lot of churches, I've been a part of a lot of churches where they just, when they, when they get a new pastor, they just don't, they, they don't trust him and they don't, they don't follow him. And it's like saying, hey, we'd rather wait here in the wilderness for the promises to be fulfilled in the next generation than going and doing what God wants now, seizing the day that God has for us. Mm -hmm. 
There's a wonderful verse that, that God spoke to me this morning, and I'm just going to read it out of my Bible. And it's Isaiah 43, verse 19. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. God is always doing a new thing. Amen. He is always doing a, a, a new thing through us. And see, that's what, what I love about what's going on here and, and the growth I've seen in this church just over the, the past year. Because we're faced with options, too. We can, we can seize the day. Well, there's an epidemic going on in the United States where everybody's running crazy and everybody's freaking out. Like, I went to Walmart because my wife wanted me to get paper plates, which means I had to walk down the paper aisle. And, like, like I, people are looking at me like, if you're going, you know, if you're going for that last toilet paper, I'm going to take you down. Like, I'm like, no, oh, sorry, like, white flag, just, just here for paper plates, don't mind me. I mean, it is scary out there. And so we have an option where we can be scared. We can join the masses, and we can, we can just quarantine ourselves in our house for, I don't know, two months or whatever. They're, they're saying the, the coronavirus at the city it originated in China, like, it took two months to decline. Are we going to sit in our houses and do nothing for two months? Are we going to miss Easter? We're going to miss... I can't, I can't imagine that. But that's one of our options. Or we can use this as an opportunity. Amen. And, and I love your pastor. You guys are so blessed because he was talking to me the other day and he told me about this new opportunity that he sees. He says, church is changing. He, he says, you know, if we all go online, there, there might be this huge revival. And, and, and people are, are going to be learning about God and, and, and knowing God that have never heard him before. He says, we might not even have church buildings in the future. It may just become all about community and, and, and small home groups and just everybody getting together, sharing. I was like, wow. You have a visionary here. Amen. And he knows the, the, the world and he knows what's going on. And so we have the option to be scared and not do anything or to step out in the midst of all the trouble and all the turmoil and say, I am using this for God's glory. This is a time that, that God is first. He is doing a new thing. And that's okay. Because that's a warrior. Somebody who's not afraid to step out during these times of trials. For Moses, I think most of us know the option Moses chose. Moses said to God, no, no, God, God, I, I, want, you to, I want you to spare these people. Let, let's, 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 let's show your compassion. Moses said, I care about what the Egyptians might think and these other countries might think. They might think you're weak, God. You don't want to appear weak. So God, in, in, his, in his wonderful mercy, said to Moses in, in verse 20, Then the Lord said, I will pardon them as you, you have requested. But as surely as I live and as surely as the earth is filled with the Lord's glory, not one of these people will ever enter that land. They have all seen my glory, glorious presence and the miraculous signs I performed both in Egypt and in the wilderness. But again and again, they have tested me by refusing to listen to my voice. They will never have seen the land that I have sworn to their ancestors. None of those who have treated me with contempt will ever see it. It's a sad ending to a great story. I mean, if hindsight is, is, is twenty twenty. but would Moses have, knowing that, how the story ended, would Moses have chosen that? Would he have chosen to, to put them first? If, if it was just 
up to him, and he would, he would go into the land and, and be a great nation, just as, just as God is promising. I mean, that promise was like a week away. They were at the land. It was, it was the next day. Let's get up. Well, we're going to enter it. And, and fear kind of sat in, and, and Moses cared too much about what other people thought and not about the Lord wanted. And that's the, the thing I love about the Bible is there's a lot of wonderful stories that tell us what to do, and there's a lot of stories that tell us what not to do. Like, it, it shows us, maybe this isn't for us. And that's the thing about warriors is warriors don't miss the opportunities. They seize the day. They see what is, what is going on around them. They're not focused on their past, they're not, not worried about their past catching up. They're saying, God, what are you doing right now? Because God is coming back. Jesus is coming back. He's on his way. Amen. Whether it's this or next week, which in 2020, the way things are going, it seems like it might be close. I don't know. I would not be surprised. Amen. But are we going to hide or are we going to take this opportunity to love God? the people who are scared. When we stand in courage in this, this modern culture and we're, we're not just reposting all the fearful memes and all the fearful, we're not, we're not spreading that, but we're spreading the courage of God. Amen. Oh, what, what, what a light shining in the darkness is that. What a great opportunity this is for the church. I mean, I, under, I understand that, that Ben has all these, these things in place Worst case scenario, just in case. I mean, I did text him this morning, are we even having church today? Just because I've, I've, I've seen so many people say, no, nope, no, nope, no more church. And being a warrior, I love that God always promises a reward. For those people who follow him, for, for those people who, who don't miss the opportunity, there's always a reward. I'm, I will make you into a great nation if you listen to his voice. There's always a reward. We don't know how, how this is going to end. But right now, we are faced with such a wonderful opportunity. To, for God's glory to, to enter lake, to, to, to be spread amongst the, the, the towns, to be spread amongst the states. This is an opportunity for churches to come together all over the world and say, we are not scared. It is through our courage that we are going to step forward. As, as the enemy tries to put us down, we say, no, we got this because God is good. We know that. We know that today. We will know that tomorrow. And we know his promises and his reward are there for all the warriors who can stand up and say, yes, God, I trust you. I love you. I know what you're doing. I don't understand it. But I know you will use it for your good. Let us go ahead and, and we'll pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the courage that you give us. Lord, you don't give us a spirit of, of being timid. You give us a courageous spirit because we are your warriors. And we follow you and we are willing to sacrifice for you, Lord. Lord, help us to, to see the opportunity. Whether it's, it's, it's helping out the, the, the shut-ins, the, the people who are... are scared to go to the store, let us, let us find ways, find people that we can show courage to, to say we're not afraid. We know whatever happens is in your hands, Lord. We thank you for everything that you do for us. We trust you and we love you and thank you for accepting us as who we are and making us warriors for you. Lord, we pray that your glory would shine in us and through us. Through everyone 
Lord, in your name we pray.